A new water-based acrylic miniature paint line has just hit the market. Armored Komodo Heavy Industries has been a name that has resounded the local hobby community for quite a while and actually in some Asian and also foreign markets more commonly popular with hobbyists who deal with gunpla. If you see my last video and have also seen this brand before, they also produce chroma flare paints or chroma paints where you just apply it by rubbing and you get a paint job like this where you produce a sort of two-tone metallic effect through very easy steps. Though that is a very interesting product, there are lots of videos out there that tackle the chroma flare line. Armwood Komodo Heavy Industries has released a paint line that has the miniature painter in mind and that's their new water-based acrylic line. Welcome to Hobby Mopo, the show designed for the miniature and scale hobbyists who's looking for more motivation and productivity in their YouTube feed. Subscribe for videos every Wednesday. This is Louis of Louis Loves Minis and let's test these paints. So these guys have been producing paints for quite a while. They have been using lacquer based paints for the majority of their business lifespan providing a lot of different colors and options for Gunpla and scale models. The best part about this company is that they're made locally here in the Philippines. In this video, we'll be taking a deep dive and a review on this new product, looking at the bottle, how they perform the palette, what's their general coverage, and how it will look on a miniature. So let's talk about the more obvious thing, the packaging. Or I would like to point out more specifically, the bottle. These bottles are 30 ml instructions and recommended PSI is also in place. But one thing that at least I'm not used to seeing when it comes to miniature paints is the nozzle. The nozzle is actually quite thin and it's actually a nozzle that a lot of hobbyists don't recommend buying when you're transferring our famous GW paints into paint bottles. This is the nozzle that they tell you to avoid so it was quite intriguing that when I saw this nozzle, it was applied on this medium. The other thing I would like to note about this paint line also is that they seem to be pretty thinned down or pre thinned down as they come out of the bottle. So let's see how they perform on the palette. So looking at back at the nozzle, you could use the elongated nozzle as a way to control the amount of flow or the amount of paint you put on the palette from the bottle because you sort of get to see where the paint actually is as you're squeezing the bottle. Though your mileage may vary because some of these paints are a little bit thicker than the other paints as per usual paint line. And you may occasionally get some dried up paint in the nozzle or you may need to shake up the paint a little bit more when you feel that a little squeeze doesn't produce paint. Because if you see right here, quite a few times I may not have shaken the bottle well or some gunk has been stuck inside the nozzle whereas when I try to squeeze, all of it just spews out. So you may be thinking this is a wastage, well of course this is, but also we may be used to dealing with popular brands like Vallejo and expensive, bot expensive brands like Chimera and Citadel Colors. These guys are actually considerably cheaper by the bottle. When you apply it straight from the palette and looking at how the brush interacts, these are very thin paints. So for someone who likes to work on their layering or who is used to doing their two thin coats, this might be a very ideal paint line for you. These 10 bottles have been given to me by the owner. And as a show of thanks, I wanted to show an honest review or opinion on how these paints perform. And I've created them a little palette here and how they look with white, gray, and black spray paint underneath. You get to see the coverage area. First off the bat, very thin paints. The way they wick off the brush, very similar across all colors. Though the coverage is not thick, it's a good thing because you don't get textures on the first pass. And right around on the second pass or second layer, you get a good solid coat already. What's interesting to see is the white over black has already maybe I would say a more than 50% coverage or opacity over that black. So maybe a good second or an optional third layer may be enough to produce a solid white over a black base coat, which is very interesting. I couldn't say the same for the yellow, but so far, so good in how we're applying these guys straight from the bottom. But now let's go into the mean meat of things and see how they perform with a miniature. And this miniature is brought to you by our 
sponsor for the month, which is Monster Minutes PH. Check the link below and use the promo code MONSDUWI for a 10% discount of a minimum purchase of 300 pesos on your checkout. Alternatively, you could also go to their Facebook page, tell them Louie loves Mini sent you, and they'll give you a 15% discount off the bat. So here's how the miniature looks like when I've applied the first layer on all of my base coats. Now, you may sort of notice that these are not the same colors that I have purchased, but I've mentioned below my paint scheme and how I've mixed the colors to achieve the flesh, the different grays, the different browns on this dwarf. And on first pass, the coverage is not so bad for a thin coat. You can tell already that on your second coat, you'll get a good solid coverage over all of the areas you want. The one thing I would like to point out is the snow over here. Based off our coverage test, the ivory covers really, really well of one coat on top of a gray layer. And that's, for me, extremely impressive and shows a lot of promise on how this paint experience is gonna go. Also, if you're wondering how we did the snow, Armored Komodo actually has a very, very interesting putty product, which is great for obliterating your mold lines. It's, it's literally called the Seamline Destroyer or the SD Putty. And it performs really, really well. And I, I saw how it dries up, and I thought it kind of looks like snow or fresh fallen snow. So I applied it on this miniature. And the theme of this miniature is I want to make it look like this dwarf is trudging through a blizzard. And these dwarves are used to high temperature, or rather, they're used to low temperature and they, they depend on their biology to keep them warm. And they're literally wearing no shirt. So I figure they're used to going into harsh temperatures and maybe he's just covering the shield or his face because snow is getting into his eyes. So in the paint scheme, I, I want all the warm tones to emanate from the skin everything else is cold so i want to show that even if he is inside or in the middle of the tundra he's fine because his skin is keeping him warm when we did the coverage test it was quite clear that these thin paints might help for someone who is used to painting miniatures and working on by glazing up and layering up because as i've pre-mixed these colors which mix very well every time i add on a layer of highlight and a glaze of shadow, it's very easy to blend. You don't see a lot of brush marks. Maybe it's also because the amount of paint I put on my brush, but at the same time, the transparency of these paints make it easy for you to get away with those brush marks and show really, really high contrast and at the same time, smooth looking transitions from your highlight areas to your shadows. So over here, you'll see the skin highlighted. I was pretty surprised. I'm terrible at layering up highlights. And I, used, I decided to use this as an exercise to practice that skill. And I'm very, very impressed with how this paint sort of helped me up my confidence in that uh, area. When I glazed it down with a bit of a purple in the shadowed areas, and you'll see the contrast is very good because of the highlights and the shadow colors we applied. But at the same time, you don't get a lot of tide marks and you also don't get a lot, a lot of brush marks. It's because the paint is naturally pre-thinned down. So, of course, the con here is that this is the optimal or uh, straight out of the bottle is the optimal thinness you'll get. So if you want to get a thicker or more opaque color, you have no choice than to add a second layer. But definitely, if you're looking for a display quality model, not army painting, I think this is a good line to look at. Generally, I was pretty happy with how it looked. On this miniature, you'll see it completely done. This was a two hour paint session. I saved painting the snow last because I just wanted to see how well the ivory performed. This was only three coats of ivory on top of everything and it made solid white snow effect on top of all these dark and warm colors as well. And then you'll see those blue highlights or those blue shadows on the snow as well as that verdigris on the shield and metallics. You'll see that that was done by just plain old watered down sky blue and watered down deep green respectively. They made quite okay and quite convincing first layer applications. And though you do see some brush marks, they make an effective ice shadow from afar. So 
I would have to say not so bad for a very very short paint session. I'm very very impressed. That's one thing to note too. Though I used Vallejo Metallics for the metallics over here. If I had more time, I would have tried non-metallic metal of these guys. There are a lot of other additives in this line as well. There are paint retarders and top coats as well that are so they're all water-based so you can invest in the whole line if you need to. So I've only used the gloss top coat so far. I haven't used the retarder for this testing session because I wanted to see how the blending goes when you apply a, a fresh layer on a dry layer. So none of this is wet blended. All of this is purely just layering on highlights and glazing on shadows. Overall, I enjoyed it. I would have to say that I'm a bit skeptical on how this paint line would go in terms of batch painting or army painting because well one these are their proprietary colors so if you are painting for example a games workshop army very loyally to the colors it might be tricky for you or it might take time for you to find a color match but if you're talking about color matches you could log on to their facebook and you can see a full album of all their available colors and the color matches or closest color matches they have to other brands like Vallejo and Tamiya, except for Games Workshop. So for army painters like us who use Games Workshop, it might be difficult to use this for army painting, not just for the color swatches, but because these do come out a little bit more thin than the usual. I'm very pleased with how easy it was to layer and blend with this paint. And I would like to thank Armored Komodo for this amazing product. So far, I've been using a few of their products. Check it out. You can YouTube them and search them. A lot of people have been reviewing their products before the release of this products, and I'm pretty sure you guys will be very, very impressed. I'll be linking in this, the description below where you can buy Armored Komodo products. And again, thank you to the guys of Armored Komodo for sending these products in. As a painter here in Manila, I'm very proud to call this a product made in the Philippines. A lot of local painters are actually shifting from foreign brands and going to pure armored Komodo because they have primers, they have metallics, they have a lot of different products for the different facets of painting the hobby. And it's turning a lot of heads. So I do urge you guys to check it out, give it a try. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys are current users of this product, put your comments down below. These guys are very community driven. And just today, I gave a review on on Facebook on the Seamline Destroyer and they already responded by saying that there will be a second batch with improved versions of this product as well. So if you've seen my other series, Philippine Hobby Community, these guys will be in episode 2 in the coming few weeks and I'll be showing and telling you guys a little bit more about Armored Komodo Heavy Industries. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Louis of Louis Loves Minis reminding you to hobby every day to keep the screws away.